All right, welcome to another episode. Um, so what we're actually getting started on is the Speedo Binnacle. All right, so I'll just let me just show you what I have managed to pick up. Um, I actually decided to go with um, the 200 kilometer an hour Speedo. And the reason why I purchased one of these, this I purchased from Mini Sport Australia. And the reason why I went for one of these compared to a genuine like, or an original one is that um, partly it's, it's actually cheaper to get this um, than a second hand one. It's, well, it's a similar price, depends what you can find, but um, buying a new piece, I know that it's going to work, it comes with warranty. Um, and the advantage is that like in Australia obviously we use some um, kilometers an hour per hour so having the speedo in kilometers per hour makes it a bit easier a bit safer I think um, still actually has the um, measurements on the inside circle there for miles per hour um, new speedo um, also the odometer is obviously uh, at zero well, it sort of comes at um, four kilometers on there so uh, the only thing it doesn't come with are the actual um, the light bulb so the light bulbs I think I can just um, use standard I think E10 12 volt bulbs 2.2 watt will do the trick but I just need to investigate a bit more um, the actual holders are obviously on the wiring harness and then the bulb sits in there and then you clip the, the holder onto there so uh, let's have a look at that. So there's a light at the top. I think I'm not actually sure what that is. I'll have to have a, investigate and work out what these connections all are. Obviously, there's a left and right indicator, handbrake warning, which I don't think the Cooper S wiring kit I have supports that. Uh, there's an ignition light. I think that one at the top possibly could be high beam. I reckon that's what that one's for. The high beam at the top. Uh, yeah, so I've got, I still need to do a bit of research to work out all the connections on there. But what I'm actually going to put together now, I'll, actually, I'll just show you the other gauges. They're just a standard um, oil and temperature gauges. I actually picked these up. Oh, they're new, but I'm um, off eBay. Someone was selling them. They didn't particularly use them with a project. So um, it wasn't massively cheaper compared to buying off um, one of the main online sellers. but. Still, it saved me a bit of money. Even with the postage, it was still a bit cheaper. So. Okay, so the other thing I got from Mini Sport is the kit, which, um, or the, the binnacle kit. So that's the, all the main piece of plastic there. So that's what the inside looks like. Um, that sort of shows you the bottom section there. There we go. So the speedo mounts on there. The gauges, the other two gauges go on either side of that. Uh, what else do I want to point out? This, yeah, I'll I'll do a test fit once I've got all the gauges in there. So obviously there's a few main holes that I use to mount that in there. Okay, so what I actually want to start off with is the actual um, the this, okay. So this um, piece of metal clips on the outside of the wheel go that way. So the actual brake in the metal goes towards the top. And this is purchased as a kit. Um, even though they're billed as separate items on the invoice, uh, you, you're paying, I think it was 100, around 140 Australian dollars for the, the plastic um, binnacle, this and also the clips. And it's, um, these clips, you could probably, um, make these if you are got the ability to do that that's what they look like and there's 14 of these that will go around and they hold the metal cowling over on the actual plastic so that's what I'm going to have a play with now
Right, so what I've found works best is get all the bottom section done. So there's uh, what one, two, three, four, five, six pins at the bottom. Get all of that bit done first. Use some painter's masking tape just so we don't damage things. And use that to hold that bottom edge in. So I'll put a few strips on there. And again, don't don't use normal masking tape. And if you painted your car, you'll have all this stuff left over anyway. Um, and then that way, it's not the gum on it isn't going to mess things up. So now that that edge is in, we can sort of start getting the other side done without that edge popping up again. And it seems like it's going to line up nicely. Uh, so now we'll just continue to do each of these sides. Okay, so that's how it looks. Um, it pretty much lines up nicely there. Um, all those clips are sort of folded in like that. And if I need to, I can adjust it again at some other point, but it seems okay. So the next thing I want to do is try and fit some of these gauges and just see how they sit in there. So I may need to go and get some more tools. Uh, I'll go the temperature one first. So here's the actual gauge. Um, come with a, I think that's a wiring diagram. Um, and different versions, well, they're all made by Smiths, but different versions are going to have different things with them. So we'll leave that for now. Um, that's the bracket to hold it in. And that will just, I think, press against that actual plastic case. And here's the actual temperature gauge. So let me get that out of the cardboard. And what I still need to purchase is another one of these light globes. So they actually, well this one's actually for the oil temperature, but the way that works, uh, you take off these caps and then the bulb sort of just slides in there. and. The online parts supplier, uh, the mini parts, they, they sell these and they're not that expensive. It's like four Australian dollars. And the bulbs you can get anywhere. So I'll order one of these at some point. So that's the light globe for it. Uh, it also needs, one of these will connect to the, the temperature sensor on the engine and the other one I think gets a power supply from the actual main speedo but again I'll sort out the wiring later we, that's not what I want to do right now I just want to play around and get these gauges sitting in there nicely so temperature is going to go on this side over here and we can play around and get that nice and level afterwards but for now I'll just get it close enough um, I might actually use a bit of um, Use some more tape and then we'll, we'll get it level and then just stick it down. So, just judging by eye, that seems okay. Right. So, the, the way the brackets work, uh, so it's come with one of these um, washers, which are like the anti shake washers and a nut to go on top and it seems like okay so that little curve bit there uh, maybe that is to um, that'll go like that just so, so there's room to still get on there but I can't actually get to that terminal uh, I, don't, I think that can actually loosen up a bit so I want to just do that quickly Loosen that terminal, turn that piece a bit, just so I can screw down the bracket and I'll get to that later. Don't know if you can see that on the camera, or you can. 
So that will sit like that. So the anti-shake washer goes on first. And then this nut goes on top. Uh, I notice that this one is um, a bit too close to the gauge, so I should have checked that before I just put that on there, but I'll take that off. So just make sure that, you can sort of see straight away now it's bent, so I'll just bend that out a bit, just to make them both stick out a bit more. I'll put that one back in a bit. Just so it's pushing against the plastic and not too close to the actual edge of where that the hole is that the gauge sits in. So that one seems okay, it may just need to be adjusted again slightly, but it's looking okay. Alright, so now let's have a play with the um, oil gauge. So again, it's got the same type of bracket. Now this is an electronic one, so it doesn't have the, the actual pipe that comes off the engine that feeds the control so it runs off like the actual sensor the same way that the water pump does. Uh, you can get different gauges uh, but for now this is the one I've got so that's what I'm using. So this is the one that actually came with the light globe for there so I need to order another one of them but that fits in the same way. Okay so again Let's just um, do a test fit and then I'll put some tape on there just once it's level. So that temperature one needs to be adjusted a bit more I think. Okay. And then again, make sure the bracket is the correct way. So that curve there goes against the where the light fitting is and then bend that arm a bit out a bit more just so that leg isn't touching near where the hole is where the gauge fits. It's just, I think that um, will support it better because then the plastic obviously the further away you are from the hole, the stronger the plastic will be. So put that anti-shake washer on. Screw this down. Sorry, you probably can't see my hands in the way. Okay, so I'm just going to loosen up that temperature one just to adjust that slightly because it just looks slightly off-center. that off so I can get a good look at them both together. Uh, that seems okay. Alright, so I'll tighten those back both up again. Okay, so finally we'll fit the actual speedometer now just to see how that all fits in there. So, I mentioned already that I need to do some research and see what needs to be connected where. Um, I noticed these two things are sealed up. Um, I'm thinking that these two are for the actual lights to just light up the display when the lights are turned on. Uh, but I'll um, I guess that is what it's for. I'll, let me just pull one of these off just so you can see what they look like. So if you, I don't have any of the, the bulb holder pieces obviously because they're on the actual wiring harness and I'm inside at the moment not where the car is. So yeah they're the same type of fitting so the actual um, the holder off the wiring harness just sort of slots in there. It has a little teeth all the way around. So that, that one, these two are for the actual light 
And the reason why they keep these covered is just so dust doesn't fall in there and get inside the display. So I'll just put that cover back on for now. So it's, we're not ready to put the bulbs in. Uh, so there's the gauge. Um, I noticed that it's it seems to be these brackets here seem to be sort of slightly off center, but it might just be how I'm looking at it. it doesn't seem to be exactly centered. Uh, the other thing it needs, obviously, is some screws to mount it in there. So I might have to go and get some because it didn't actually come with any. So I might just try and see if we can find a few screws for that. Okay, so I'll leave it there and I'll go and find some screws and then start again. So that slides in there and it needs to fit in between these parts. So I'll have a bit of a play and try and get it to go in there. It seems like it's slightly too wide, but it might just be the way the plastic is sitting. Uh, yeah, there we go. So just bend those bits of plastic out a little bit. That'll enable it to get in there. And it's more of a case of just lining up those, making sure they fit. Uh, I'm not sure about that rubber seal because it's just sitting there. I'm guessing that actually needs to come on the other side and I think they just put it there just so when it's manufactured so it doesn't get lost. So take off that piece of rubber. It just seems wrong that it's just sitting there like that and it should be on the other side so just roll it forwards I think that's where it needs to sit that piece of rubber just let it sit on there I'm just going to adjust it all the way around just so it's sitting down in that lip nicely okay so let's give that another shot Could be the case that these need to be bent too. Kind of looks like it does. They need to be bent out first. So I'll try doing that. I'll take it back out again. And just do that very carefully. It just seems like it needs to be a bit flatter like that. Hopefully that doesn't void the warranty. But that is how it seems it needs to be. Otherwise the screws aren't going to go in here properly. That now seems to be a bit better. Uh, the only difficulty we're having now is that it's going to be hard to get those screws in there. Seems to be a bit of a gap all the way around it too. But so because we've put these gauges in, it's going to be hard to get them screws in. But I can get them in a bit.
doesn't actually seem like that hold even lines up. It might just be because every time I put this down on the table, it's um, moving out of position. So I will try just holding it up a bit. where I need to ch you change these and use different screws. Okay, so the whole lines up. It's a bit of an angle, but it still kind of lines up. They need to be fixed up, so I'm going to have to take out these gauges in order to fix up the screws, but have a look how it looks. Uh, that bit here is moved again, but that's just me pushing it down on the table. I think once it's left in the car, It'll be fine. So that's that's how it looks. I'll just move you out a bit because you're on a tripod. You can't see properly. So there we go. So that's how that all goes together. Okay, so we um still working on the speedo here. I just want to show you some of these um bulb holders. So here, here are the bulb holders that come on the wiring harness and the way these work you need to actually screw the bulb um, into those bits there so if you look at this one here you'll notice that there's not much room to screw the bulb in um, if you just pull down on the wire there's a spring inside pull down on there then you should be able to screw the bulb into there and this one that one I've done already now the type of bulbs these are um, E10 bulbs so they're 12 volt 2.2 watt and they're all standard, so the same type of bulb for all of those fittings that need it. Um, on this particular car, I need to add in some uh, wiring for the indicator bulbs. And I also need to um, just purchase a couple more of these for the indicator bulbs. Um, because this particular vehicle, so a Mark 1 Cooper S, it has the... Um, it should have the indicator bulb on the end of the actual um, stick to the, the indicator stick but that's a, um, a newer version of the stick I think from a it's possibly from a Leyland Mini um, because it's got the high beam on it I'm just going with that one because that's all I've got at the moment just to save a couple of hundred bucks um, the other thing too these are the screws that the actual speedo housing mounts onto so they're the lower ones um, there are upper screws up under here, but unfortunately they're not usable because of where the because of that particular um, speedo housing. Uh, so I'll just show you inside the car and then explain what I'm actually going to try doing. So you will notice that uh, see if you can go see a Okay, can you see that hole down there? Um, the purpose of this hole here, I'm just going to stick my finger through it so you can see what I am talking about. There it is there. So that hole there is designed so you can put a screwdriver underneath the dash and then that way you're sort of screwing the speedo housing in on the right end to get to those lower screws. So that's the purpose of that, them holes, so there's one on each side. Uh, the other thing, I need to drill a couple of holes up the top here just to support the top of the housing. Because those upper upper um, holes don't line up with this particular aftermarket piece, so that's what I need to work on. So I'll set up the camera just so you can see that. But it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the only thing is I'm drilling holes in the the, the body. That's not something I really wanted to do, but uh, um, apart from like messing around with extra brackets, I can't see any other way to do it. So I'll get started on that now. Okay, so I've drilled those, um, the upper holes now. That's sort of where it sits. I just need to find longer screws. Um, and then, the other thing, like, when, when you fit this, it's gonna fit flush against the actual um, firewall. But one issue that I might have is that because I've used the sound deadening rather than the felt um, sound deadening, 
it's not going to create a perfect seal. So I've got some Weber strips. So I'm going to just remove this again and just take it to the bench and just show you what I'm going to do. Okay, so the products I've got here, these are just left over from things I've just had around other um, tasks. So what it is, it's a, it's a seal, foam seal, and then it has some um, and a, a removable um, backing strip on there. You peel it off and then it sticks down. So I've got two different sorts here. So that's one type, so it's a, it's a bit thicker. Uh, but the purpose of that, it's, they're designed for windows of houses, so if to um, stop wind getting in, just to make the house a bit more energy efficient. But I'm going to just try sticking it around on here, just around the edge, just to give it a, just to make it form a nice seal, to stop any um, odours getting in, because you're definitely going to get smell from the carburetor. Um, because the way the way the SU carburetors work, there's no charcoal canister, so you're going to get um, fumes coming in if you don't seal it this way. So that's what I want to do. I'll have a play around and just work out what one's the best one. Um, I think the wider one would do a better job. Um, even if that sort of sticks over the edge and it's noticeable, you won't see it once the um, the trim goes in. And even if it, if I needed to, I could just run a knife, Stanley knife, and just trim it. A bit shorter so I'll get started and stick that on. Alright so the way I'm sticking it on like it's actually overhanging on the inside because in that way if it is an issue on that side it's not going to matter. It's very easy to get around the corners and then it sticks down nicely so I'll just keep working my way around. Okay so that's what it looks like now with it all stuck around the edge so um, I'll just punch some holes in where the screws go these ones sort of clamped in there. I'm not sure what to do with this bit because the wiring goes through there. So um, I'm, it's probably meant to have a, um, a rubber grommet, but I'll sort that bit out afterwards because I can probably still slide a grommet on afterwards if that's what even's meant to be there. All right, so let me get it fitted. All right, so if anyone wanted to know, like this is the actual switch, which is meant to be underneath the actual binnacle to turn the lights for just the display panel on and off but I've just connected them two up because the way it works I can leave that like that um, the speedo lights don't actually come on unless the actual main lights are on so there's a switch for the rear lights and then you can see those lights come on nicely I might actually dim the garage lights just so you can see what it looks like Obviously the temperature and the oil won't come on because um, I still need to connect them up and get the bulb for that. So I'll do a final test and I'll just record that but um, that'll do for now and um, hopefully you've got some idea how to install one of these binnacles if you ever want to fit one. Okay I just wanted to add in a bit more information about the actual flasher units. Now on the um, the 200 kilometer an hour um, odometer display uh, it's actually got the lights built in for the indicators where on like the Mark 1 Cooper S would normally just has, have one light globe on the end of the indicator stick so that's what that is showing there um, in order to make the two lights on the actual um, speedo work as indicators um, I just had a look at the wiring diagram for a, this is obviously a, uh, where do we go, let's turn on here, there, um, 1100 uh, Cooper S, I think it's Cooper S Mark II. So if you follow the way it's connected from, P is the pilot, from that point um, directly to the dash bulb, and then from that point it's got to, doesn't necessarily connect there, as long as it's connected to the actual, um, well, it actually would be the, this point here you'd want to connect it to. The actual um, off the actual indicator stalk with the wiring for all that that goes to so that's how that needs to be connected uh, and I was actually playing around the flashy units too I'll show you this one so this is the one I actually had and it, the problem with this particular one was that the actual um, what would be P the pilot light for some reason that's just providing um, a constant 12 volts uh, so X is battery, uh, L is load, um, and I'm guessing it's probably because this is meant to be a like a um, positive earth. That's 
probably why it's not working because it, it, it made the actual um, indicator warning light just stay on all the time. Um, the one I went for, so here's the packet for it, I'll just take it over the car. Uh, so this is the one that actually works well and it's, a, um, it's an electronic one and it's not load sensitive. So what it means by that is that um, uh, when, it, when it actually is connected up, so I'll show you the wiring diagram on the back of that flashy unit, just wait for that to focus. So that's how it's connected up. Um, you, you can't just connect, uh, you, you need to understand that and the actual wiring diagram which I just sort of showed you over here. Because um, that's how you want it connected so that the two separate lights obviously only turn on in that direction that you're indicating. Because they, um, the actual circuits both run off the, um, the P, the pilot point of that flasher which in my case is a, I think it's a, let me just see if the colour's the same. The colour's not the same on this diagram. The colour is different on mine. I think it might be green and purple. Uh, I'll have to, I've lost the page marking now. Oh, here we go. Um, piled up on mine is F on here, which is light green and purple. So that, that's some like standard Mark 1 Cooper S wiring and then you have to modify it to work like this. Now, over in the car it actually works and the way I, I've set that up um, and let's have a play. So obviously I don't have the actual lights connected into the speedo yet because I'm still waiting for bulb holders but I'll just turn on the ignition and I'm indicating left so I've got two light globes set up here. Um, this one might not turn on because of the actual connections. So that's indicating left, uh, and the actual front and rear lights are indicating properly. Um, and it just continued to flash a bit just because it uses up um, a bit of residual. Okay, and the indicating right, that's not coming on just because of the contact, but if I press down, it will come on. So then I'll, that's how, how I've got it wired here is how I showed you in the diagram. It looks pretty confusing so I've just got a whole heap of um, alligator clips and leads. But then if I cancel, they sort of both flash for a bit and it's just using up residual power but I can live with that. Okay, and then indicate left, the other light globe goes on. Um, and the advantage of using the non-load sensing is that you can use these smaller bulbs they will still go on rather than just this one going on and not the two front and rear indicators. So that um, flashy unit which I purchased, uh, the other flashy unit I purchased was, I think it was about $16. Um, oh, I just lost the thing. Um, here's another one I picked up. That one was only $3, but I didn't bother playing with that. I just picked it up just because it was $3. But this one, this one is load sensitive and it actually gets connected up slightly different so uh, I just got that just to play around in case the one I had didn't work. Alright I'll leave it there and still just need to get those um, the actual um, connectors for the left and right indicator. So the other stuff I think is fairly straightforward it's just the indicators which is a hassle because I've got to rewire. Alright I'll leave it there and then That'll do for now. Thanks for watching my videos.